Boomer, we're doing a piece about slow quarterbacks. <laughs> Who's the slowest mm. you ever saw? Bernie Kosar. Easy. Done. Oh, Bernie Kosar. Athleticism was not his long suit. I, he was like six foot six, 225 pounds. He looked like a praying mantis out there. I mean, he was like all over the place. Uh, I'm telling you, I would stand on the sideline. He would stand in this cockeyed stance. He had the worst stance. He looked like the ugly duckling. And I'd be going, how is this guy? How does he move? I always thought the guy was going to fall down uh, in his back pedal as he, as he came away from center. He always looked like he was one step away from losing and falling right on his tush, basically. If the NFL awarded style points, Bernie Kosar wouldn't have gotten any. I want to read you something. Uh, Jim Murray used to write for the LA Times. He described you this way. Kozar doesn't throw the ball, he just lets go of it like a guy losing a bar of soap in the shower. It looks more like a complicated fumble than a pass. Is that a fair description? Well, I'm not sure if it's fair, but again, I, I'm not mechan I wasn't mechanically, uh, again, the best quarterback. But in the heat of the battle, you can't be thinking about mechanics. The ball's just got to come out the way it naturally comes out. If you believe the quarterback is a result-oriented position in a result-oriented world, if you don't look great doing it, does it really matter if the throw's good and the throw's there and the throw's on time and it gets completed? It's hard to argue with a guy who once threw 308 consecutive passes without a single interception. Kozar might not have looked like a natural, but like he says, does it really matter? Kosar in trouble. Rolling right. Throws on the run. Touchdown, Brown! What a throw! An unbelievable throw by Kosar! Take that, Fran Tarkington. We uh, covered a, a celebrity uh, golf tournament that Jim Kelly put on, and he had uh, a competition with a bunch of quarterbacks, and I think you were all trying to throw through a tire. Yeah. Nobody could throw it through the tire. You took it put it right through. Well, again, that's why I feel blessed early in my career for coaches not switching my style. Early in his career, there wasn't much reason to switch his style. As a 19-year-old freshman, Kozar led the University of Miami to its first national championship. Even then, he was the master of the unorthodox leaving sunny South Florida two years early and manipulating the NFL draft so he could go home to play in Cleveland. If you go back to the 1980s, and you look at the city of Cleveland, $100 million in debt, one of the highest crime rates in the United States. The Cayuga River is on fire. Cayuga, Cuyahoga. <laughs> so all these bad things are happening. And yet, that's where you decide you want to play. You grow up a Browns fan. You grow up in Northeastern Ohio. Uh, you grow up in Municipal Stadium. And I forgot to say, Municipal Stadium is one of the biggest crap holes in, the, in NFL history. It depends on your perspective <laughs> as to how you're looking at it. Now, I personally like the green spray-painted mud that they called grass. <laughs> I always try to take a negative and turn it into a positive. I don't like to dwell on the bad things, and I don't like to feel sorry for myself. I don't like excuses for failure. Bernie made a career out of turning negatives into positives. Defenses saw the immobile Kozar as an easy target to blitz. Kozar saw blitzing defenses as an easy target to pick apart. When they were blitzing, instead of playing it safe, that was my chance to go for a home run and score a touchdown. So when I saw the all-out blitz coming, no matter when it was, where it was, I was taking a shot. Kozar's wacky throwing motion actually threw off defenses trying to figure out where the ball was going. Nobody in the history of football looked so far opposite of where the ball was going. I was at Houston Oilers coaching against Bernie at his peak. And you know how people say, watch the quarterback? Do not watch Bernie. If I was Bernie's wife, I'd be worried because he could be looking one way 
and doing something else. The ball's coming out of his hands, and I'm saying, no, Bernie, no, Bernie. Great throw, Bernie. <laughs> you know, I thought he'd thrown the ball too early, but he had a great feel for the anticipation of those throws, and that's really the reason that he was so very effective. Kozar became the first quarterback to lead his team to the playoffs in each of his first five seasons since Otto Graham did it in the 1950s. Talk about turning negatives into positives. By the late 80s, the dog pound was hotter than South Beach, and Kozar was the toast of his hometown. He was the typical guy that the city would fall in love with. Not John Elway, not a great athlete, but smart, hardworking, courageous, uh, maximizing his ability. There were songs on the radio, Bernie, Bernie, how you can throw, Bernie, Bernie, Super Bowl. Poems were being sent into the papers. The city went nuts. The only thing that drove Cleveland more nuts than Kozar was the sight of John Elway. Three times the Browns met the Broncos in the AFC Championship game. All three times the Broncos prevailed. And while we always remember Elway's last minute drive and Ernest Biner's last second fumble, it's easy to forget that Bernie had put his team in position to win those games. And you can't suffer tragic defeat unless you reach the doorstep of victory. To me, he's Charlie Brown. And he, the football always gets pulled away by Lucy, just as he's about to kick it. You know, that's his lot in life. And he doesn't get the Elway ending. He gets the Bernie Kosar ending. And, you know, he gets to be happy with that. But good grief. Kosar kept trying to write a different ending, often to the chagrin of his own coaches. Now, I have some principles that I believe in offensively that sometimes butted heads with coaches. I believe in offensive offense. And that may seem stupid, you know, but when you sometimes have defensive coaches who play defensive offense, it makes, starts making more sense. It never made sense to Bill Belichick, the defensive guru who became Cleveland's head coach in 91. He was new to offense back then, and I, I think we both always had a uh, mutual respect for each other. We just had different philosophies at the time as to how to be productive. Can you remember your last pass as a Cleveland Brown? Yeah, pretty vividly. We were playing Denver, ironically, and they had two very aggressive safeties. So these guys tended to squat and sit, and I told Michael Jackson, kind of drew it in, the, in our mud, one down about eight, 16 yards. Now you were doing this in the huddle? In the huddle, kind of, yeah. Went out about 16 yards and then cut in like a square end and I'll pump it and then just run right past them. Belichick wasn't the kind of coach who wanted his quarterback drawing up plays in the mud, even when they worked exactly as planned. Is that ironic that it, you know, turned out being my last pass, you know, as a Brown in Cleveland Stadium? But again, I, I don't look at it, I never looked at it as being insubordinate, and it wasn't with a malicious intent. But Belichick had seen enough. With his team in first place, he cut his starting quarterback in the middle of the season. You were 29 years old, right? Yeah, was... You were still at your peak. And if I remember, the reason said that you had diminished skills. Well, now, everyone, you know, who's entitled to their own opinion. I, you know, unfortunately, that I've, been your opinion. Well, I didn't think so, but I mean, I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, I like me. Um, what happened happened, and it was of one of the lowest points in my life. There's no question about it, because that was my team. That was where I wanted to play. That's where I wanted to finish. In Cleveland, the feeling was mutual. The city mourned the departure of Bernie and moaned about Belichick. A local station even promised to air every Cowboy game for the rest of the season, because Dallas immediately signed Kozar to fill in for the injured Troy Aikman. I was in Dallas the week he got whacked in Cleveland, and he shows up in Dallas on a Thursday morning, and Norv Turner is assigned by Jimmy Johnson, and I quote, get this guy ready to play, I don't care what you have to do. Bernie just studied his rear end off, came in, won the game 20 to 15. Ozar rolls out right, pumps it once, throws it in the end zone, and Novacek, he's got to be scored. People were saying how great you played. God, they were so good that I, I think I have one of the longest passes in Cowboy history. 
I think it threw it from me to you to Emmett, and Emmett ran 85 with it. Ozark to throw short, the catch made by Smith at the 20, spins across the 25 and breaks a tackle. Emmett and the Cowboys might have made it look easy, but there was nothing simple about what Bernie did that day. He won an NFL game after basically having about 36 hours to take a playbook in and totally digest it. One of the greatest things I think I've ever seen in football. I remember after the game, North Turner said, you know, I write a book on my life in football and this is gonna be the longest chapter. The longest chapter of Kozar's life in football wasn't quite over. In the NFC Championship game against the 49ers, Aikman was again forced to leave with a concussion. And Aikman is woozy, walking around holding his head. Bernie would have one more chance to win a championship game and help lead a team to the Super Bowl. Kozar back to throw, short slant. Oh, Harper caught it, he's breaking away. 20, he's gonna score, touchdown. Dallas is gonna win the NFC Championship again. It was classic Kozar. He turned the biggest negative of his career into the biggest positive. What a difference, what a, difference a couple months makes, huh? Isn't that amazing? He finished his career backing up Dan Marino in Miami and doing what he'd always done, finding unorthodox ways to win football games. One of the most interesting plays in NFL history is one that you are credited with being the architect and that's the Dan Marino stop spike. the yeah. 30 seconds to go. I believe Marino is saying I'm going to spike it. Marino takes the snap from center. He's looking. He throws. Oh, no! Touchdown, Dolphins, Mark Ingram. Yes, yes. I know you like that call. That was something that me and Gary Danson came up with back in the mid-'80s and just kind of carried with me. This goes back to, again, what are your gifts that God's given you and what are your limitations? What do you, could you do, what can't you do? And I had to take advantage mentally of every situation that I could take advantage of because I couldn't run like Donovan McNabb could run right now. Find a way, somehow, some way, find a way to get it done. That's kind of the way I, I looked at playing quarterback. Like my motion, albeit a little unorthodox, the results are what I thought mattered. However, whatever, just get it done. The clock play was the perfect finale for a player whose value couldn't be measured by a stopwatch, proving once more that appearances can be deceiving. Just ask the guy who drafted Bernie Kosar. You know what, I don't know what his 40 time was. I don't want to know what his 40 time was. I didn't want to know what his 40 time was then. Uh, Gil Brandt said he knew one time, I said, don't tell me. I'm sure it was slow, but um, he won a lot of football games.